Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Out YouTube channel and in today's video I'll be showing you how I made these two clear cards as alternatives using the January 2021 paper pumpkin kit. I hope you'll stick around and see how I made them. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. In today's video, I'm going to be making my first alternatives using the January 2021 paper pumpkin kit, which is called Sending Hearts. Now these cards are already cute how they're made, but I did want to show you another way you could use this. Today I'll be making two clear cards and I will be pretty much following the layout that is given in the instructions. I'll just have a couple alterations so I can make it into a clear card. Besides the items in the kit, which I will be using one of everything for each card, I also got out a piece of clear cardstock in 10 mil and a piece of white cardstock. This is going to be for my personal message inside the card just so I have a place to write. Now if you're interested in finding out more about what I call clear cardstock, I do have a Q&A video and I will link it in the description box below. If I add any other products as I start the process, I will be sure to let you know in that voiceover. As always, if I leave you with any questions, leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be doing the cutting. I will be cutting one of each of the base cards in half to go on the inside of the clear cards. I cut these slightly smaller than four and a quarter by five and a half. That way when I put them inside the clear card, it won't interfere with the card closing any. You'll see here, it's just a very tiny sliver that I cut off the five and a half inch end. Once both of the cards were cut down, I brought in my piece of clear cardstock and I cut this in half to four and a half inches wide and then it stays at that 11 inches tall. This stock you can easily fold by hand. I just have the side of my trimmer help me keep everything in place. Now I do go ahead and bring in my Arteza bone folder just to make that a nice crisp fold. And then finally for the cutting, I brought in that piece of white cardstock and I'm going to cut it to two pieces that are the same sizes as the cards that Stampin' Up! provided. This was slightly smaller than three and a quarter inches wide and then I measured each one as I cut those down to the correct height. Now I do cut it again slightly smaller just so when I put the Stampin' Up! provided card on the front, it covers up the piece of white cardstock on the inside completely just so I don't have any weird pieces sticking out from the front. I went ahead and got each of the stamps that I'll be using today put on a clear block. I like to get these on there ahead of time just so I don't have to spend time taking stamps off and on. I will be stamping on this Sizzix mat because the stamps don't have any cushion on the back of them. This helps get a nice impression. Because these are new stamps, I do spend some time kind of rubbing my fingers or tapping my fingers on them to take off any oils from production. I find that this helps get a nice crisp image right from the package. I did go ahead and bring in a scrap of cardstock to keep off to the side just to practice stamping each one for the first time. This way I make sure that I get good ink coverage and that I get a good feel for the stamp on how it needs to be stamped. Now once I did the two smaller labels, I decided that I really didn't want to ink up the big heart stamp twice because it did take a little extra to ink that up. So I did ink it up once and I made sure to huff on it or blow some moist air on it before I brought it to the heart because I do only want to stamp this one time. 
because I did only have one chance at this, I did take some extra time to make sure I had it lined up correctly. And then when I brought it to my piece of cardstock, I made sure to really hold it in place and make sure that I pushed well on all areas of that image to get a good stamp. And I think it turned out pretty great. Now that all of the pieces are ready, it's time to start making the cards. The first one that I'm gonna recreate as a clear card is going to be the one with the mailbox. I start by putting my piece of red pattern paper on the inside of the card. And once again, just because I cut it slightly smaller than the inside, the fold still stays nice and crisp. Once that was in place, I put some adhesive on the back of the piece of cardstock that will hold my personal message, and I placed that black scallop die cut that came in the kit on the left side. This way you'll still be able to see it from the front. This piece, once the adhesive was on it, just got centered on the inside as best as I could. Now it's time to decorate the front of the card. I start by cutting a piece of the ribbon and tying it into a bow. Now I'm not a professional bow tire, so I did have to fiddle with this quite a bit, but finally I got it in a good shape and size that I wanted it. To put this bow onto the card, I'm using the glue dots from the kit, and I just put one on the back of the knot. Now I was gonna go ahead and put the dimensionals on the back of the sentiment label, but I realized at that time I had probably better put this card on the front before I did that, just so there's no more bumpiness I have to go over. I did make sure when I placed the card on the front that I didn't center it, I just put it over where the white cardstock was inside. That way you see that little scallop border peeking out from the left. To finish this card off, I put the sentiment label on the front, kind of overlapping the bow a little bit. And then from the kit, I used one of the medium size enamel hearts and I placed that onto the flap of the envelope. And here's a close up look at the first card. Now I'll be recreating the second card or the one with the stamped heart and the word love as a clear card. Because the process of putting together this card is pretty much like the first, I just used different elements, I thought that I would talk to you a little bit about my thoughts on how to turn the Stampin' Up! card into a clear card. I do make a lot of clear cards here on my channel. I love clear cardstock. So if you're interested when you're done here, I will have my clear card playlist linked in the description box below. That's gonna give you some more of my thoughts, but when I do cards like this, I try to figure out what elements from the card can go on the inside and how I can hide my personal message. The good thing about clear cards is you can have lots of different layers without adding a lot of bulk because you're seeing the front and the inside from the same distance or at the same time. I know that because I have that large piece of white cardstock on the front of each card for the focal point, that that is a great way to hide my personal message inside. Now, sometimes I will make an inner card so I have more room to write, but I think that with today's layout and today's cards, that just cutting that little square or rectangle of white cardstock worked. Now that you've had some of my thoughts, I'm gonna finish up this card with some more of those enamel hearts. And here's a look at the finished second card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made these clear cards using the January 2021 Paper Pumpkin Kit. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to see more alternatives, make sure to click on that subscribe button if you haven't already. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.